It's not uncommon to want to escape from modern day society, but what if you could leave the structure of the 21st century for good? In recent years, a lot of people have looked at what's considered to be an inevitable part of living with criticism. But there's an extremist viewpoint that's also emerging from the dissatisfaction. Anarcho-primitivism. Or just primitivism. Maybe a perfect world doesn't function with houses, cars, or running water. The best way to live, they believe, is to return to our ancestral roots. Recently, anarcho-primitivism has gained a lot of attention, especially through the internet and meme culture. So why the sudden popularity in a fringe movement like this? At its core, anarcho-primitivism is the idea that modern society is inherently flawed and that the best structure of living is hunting, gathering, urging for extreme change on a global scale. Primitivists believe that the primal lifestyle of our hunter-gatherer ancestors is good for society as a whole and for the individual. A lot of people might imagine hunter-gatherers as a group of people struggling to survive until the agricultural revolution came around when we started farming. English philosopher Thomas Hobbes once described this life, specifically one without government, as nasty, brutish, and short. But now, a lot of modern research suggests that the opposite is true. In his book Sapiens, Yuval Harari goes in depth about the history of Homo sapiens and their behaviors. He argues that with the agricultural revolution around 10 or 12,000 years ago, humans encountered domestication not of plants and animals per se, but of themselves. Harari claims that wheat in particular inspired the movement from a nomadic lifestyle to plantation maintenance. Wheat became an important food source, but its specific needs of water, soil, and freedom from weeds caused humans to tend to it day and night. If hunching over and bad ergonomics are a problem for modern humans, the same goes for our ancient ancestors. The human body evolved for millions of years for the purpose of hunting and foraging. Then, all of a sudden, we started performing labor-intensive and repetitive tasks that our bodies had never experienced before. Farming led to a host of skeletal problems. As a result of giving up the nomadic lifestyle to stick around and tend to the crops, humans underwent an intense population boom between about 9500 and 3500 BCE. While a settled life of farming might seem more comfortable than constant voyaging, a ton of problems would follow. With so many people clustered together, disease can spread rapidly, so outbreaks became common. Additionally, human diets were simplified to reflect the few crops and animals that they cultivated. Even though there was technically more food to go around, another factor in population growth, the food they were eating lacked the diversity and nutrition of foraging. Aside from the health issues, the threat of violence between two groups of humans would have probably been much more likely. Before farming, if two bands of people were to run into each other and try to use the same area for hunting and foraging, but one of them was bigger and more aggressive, the other group could usually just move on. After all, most human bands were nomadic tribes anyway, so they would have moved on eventually no matter what. On the other hand, once farming came around, if a new group of people suddenly wanted to use the resources of your land, it's almost impossible to just pick up and move on. So to stay and fight and protect what you've built might be your only option. On an economic level, YouTuber Econ John examines anarcho-primitivism and the points it makes about capitalism and modern consumerism. In a world that values objects and collections, there's undoubtedly a ton of waste being output by factories and companies. People undergo a dependency loop on the system without being able to stop it or prevent waste. After all, everyone has to eat. A single person couldn't recreate every amenity in the 21st century home without some help. So, individuals are confined to the structure of modern day society. So what was the primary gain from all this? With all this in mind, it might seem obvious that humanity took a turn for the worse at the dawn of the agricultural revolution. Even so, the reconfiguring of society at large may be more difficult than it states on paper. One of the main problems with the theory of anarcho-primitivism is the current global population. A life of simple foraging and hunting would be impossible for over 8 billion people to adopt, and the majority of human beings would die. Optimally, a globe housing around 100 million people or less would make the idea a little more obtainable. Conceptually, there are some aspects of primitivism that lean more toward fiction than fact. Philosophy YouTuber Kane B points out elements of pseudoscience integrated into some theories, like an increased spiritual connection with nature that might occur with a more wild lifestyle. And some theorists believe that humans should abandon symbolic language in exchange for a one-on-one -on -one understanding of the natural world. 
In any case, anarcho-primitivism reveals the many flaws of a plantation-driven world and encourages a more stable way of living apart from the gruel of modern day production. For a lot of people, the thought of revising society like this is a nice thought to entertain. So, primitivism has made its mark both in simple hypotheses and extreme ideologies. At this hour, police still have no leads in the package bombing in Lake Forest. Chuck Gowdy is here with the latest in the investigation to that story, Chuck. Jack, a couple of days ago, Percy Wood received a letter from somebody named Enoch Fisher. The letter informed Wood to expect a book in the mail very soon, or when he got the book, it blew up in his face. The return address, 3414 West Ravenswood Avenue, but it didn't help much. It's a vacant lot. So, police are hoping for better luck with clues the explosion left behind. From 1978 to 1995, American terrorist Ted Kaczynski awed the public for his crimes. Known as the Unabomber, Kaczynski sent multiple bombs to universities and other institutions through the mail as a way to threaten his work into publication. Kaczynski's philosophy in question is written in Industrial Society and Its Future, a manifesto claiming that the Industrial Revolution and all the technology produced since has been detrimental to the human race. Our other major story tonight, a break in the Unabomber case. FBI agents are searching the Montana cabin of former mathematics professor Ted Kaczynski. Just moments ago, we received these pictures of the suspect in custody, sitting in the back of a white truck. He lives like a hermit near the town of Lincoln. He is in custody, but he has not been charged. Jada Dapper is live. The lethal mail bombings resulted in the most expensive FBI manhunt in history, before Kaczynski was eventually caught and given eight life sentences in prison without parole. In 2008, Museum recreated Kaczynski's forest hideout to showcase his recluse living. But now, the idea has become fascinating for more reasons than just its ominous sight. In some circles on the internet, Kaczynski gained something of a cult following. Sometimes ironic, sometimes not so much. All kinds of primal-inspired memes have become popular either as a result of the rising popularity of primitivism or maybe the other way around. A series of memes mention Kaczynski and his manifesto, a lot of the time with unassuming clips or other popular images. Lessons in Meme Culture describes them as bizarre and disarming to the point of being funny. Done. <laughs> now let's see how it looks so far. The Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. Time. Whether ironic or not, it's a clear example of primitivism seeping into internet culture. If you've spent any amount of time scrolling through memes in the past couple of years or so, then there's a good chance you've come across one or two return to monkey memes. If you're unfamiliar, these memes advocate for the rejection of the modern human experience in favor of the simpler existence of our ape ancestors. Among primitivist memes, these are probably the most common. They definitely have a wider audience than Kaczynski memes. This idea of becoming one with nature isn't new. Reality shows like Naked and Afraid and Alone challenge people to abandon the comfort of their homes in exchange for the bitter, unkept wild. With the advent of social media, these ideas are spread much more rapidly and on a global scale. TikTok has become a hub of experimental living, from spending more time in the wild to bathing less frequently, to examining Kaczynski's criticisms of the world. Probably one of the most famous primitivists on the internet is Liver King, an influencer dedicated to primal living. As far as diet goes, he's true to his name. We got this. We got some fresh liver with some maple syrup and salt. We got a femur bone with a huge chunk of bone marrow in there. Liver King, whose real name is Brian Johnson, has over 3 million TikTok followers intrigued by his primal philosophies. His primary mission is to put back in what the modern world left out. Liver King adapted the lifestyle when his two sons became increasingly sick in modern society, and he believed the only solution was to abandon the destructive ways of modern living. He's famous for his intense diet and workout routine. But further than that, he and his wife take ice baths, turn off Wi-Fi at night, and sleep on wooden panels. In life, he adapted a simple ranking system of all things wild and civilized. Either something is primal and worth having, or subprimal and better off left behind. Various other TikTok trends may not directly criticize society, but still take after the idea of living wild. Barefoot TikTok shows people living their day-to-day -day lives without shoes. The glass that barefooters just get told about all the time. What piece of glass? That piece of glass there? On Twitter, nonprofit organization Barefoot is Legal claims that rejecting foot coffins allows for a greater connection to the earth and a healthier, more natural gait. 
grocery stores, gas stations, and unkept trails are all fair game. Liver King's not unfamiliar with this concept, but it seems like, for the most part, he confines his feet in public. Anarcho-primitivism is an extremist viewpoint that urges for drastic change in society. And nonetheless, it's gained something of a following online, whether ironic or not. Taking a closer look at the history of humans and of society, has uncovered darker facts about modern life. So in our fast-paced modern world, it's not surprising that so many people find something like primitivism attractive. Though I'm not positive our ancestors ate dozens of animal livers in any given day, overall, examining history from a new lens and prompting change in our society, especially if it advocates for a greater public agency, might not be so bad.